This Christmas edition is brought to you by Selby Studios, graphic imaging for family, home, business, and of course, for the holidays. Hi, I'm Jeff Gould, and A Prairie Christmas is one of the things I do at ILikeThatStory.net. I thought, since it's December, since we're in the holiday season, I'd play uh, some of my stories that I use for my radio programming, and I thought I'd show those if you're watching this on YouTube in front of a fireplace, and if you're not, well, you can just listen along and pretend. This is a Christmas fable called The Magic Purse. It was cold, windy, raw. Snow had melted and was pooling in the bottom of John's shoes. He cursed the weather. Out the window of the coffee shop, he saw the last minute rush of Christmas shopping, lights, decorations. I used to love Christmas. The thought made him feel worse. Just then, from outside, a little girl stopped and peered through the window. Her face broke into a smile as if she recognized him. Before he knew it, she was inside at his table. Hey, mister, I've been looking for you. Do I know you? Nope, but I came to give you a gift. She pressed something in his hand and whispered, It really works. With that, She ran toward the door. Wait, John said. But when the girl stopped, all he could think to say was, Why? Her smile grew wider. Because you looked like you needed it. And with that, she was gone. He looked around suspiciously. Stupid kid. He looked at what she gave him. It looked like an old-fashioned purse. Well, it was a purse, like the kind used before people had pockets. It had a drawstring, leather-lined, faded velvet. There were words stitched near the opening. He looked closely. What I'm thankful for. Huh. It felt empty. He tipped it out to make sure. (laughs) It was empty, all right. Ha, he said. That's about it. His sour smile sagged into dismay. He didn't go to work, went straight home and called in sick, and in truth, he did feel sick, but in a way he could not place. A week or so passed, the purse forgotten in the pocket of his overcoat. He had a dream one night, when he was a kid, sledding down a hill, going faster and faster. He was laughing and shouting, it all seemed so real that when he woke, The emotion was still there, even as the images faded. He hummed jingle bells in the shower to help him remember the dream. As he put on his coat to go to work, his hand brushed against something unfamiliar in his pocket. He pulled it out. It was the purse. (laughs) Stupid thing. He tossed it on the counter. It landed with a small, muted clink. His eyes narrowed. He picked it up. Funny, wasn't empty. He reached inside and pulled out a coin about the size of a half dollar. Worn, silver with a smooth edge. One side was a snowflake, the other was just one word. Dreams. Huh. John thought about dreams that day, not just sleeping dreams. The kind of stuff you think about when you imagine what your future could be. He smiled as he thought about it. As he entered the apartment building, he held the door for a neighbor coming in with a heavy package. This was the same neighbor that had picked up his mail for him when he was out of town. He's a good guy, John thought. The next morning, he was surprised to find his purse made a small clinking noise. Now, there were two coins. The one that said dreams, and another, a worn copper coin, thick and heavy, that said neighbors. On the subway that morning, he fiddled with the two coins deep in thought. He cleaned his apartment, thought about how warm it was, and found a bright coin that said shelter on it the next day. He called his nephew, 
married and expecting a child, and later sent him a present for the baby, and another coin appeared. This one said, family. Well, the more he paid attention, the more coins appeared. Coins that said, sunshine, health, food. Coins that said, good shoes, playgrounds, and taxis. Even one that said, today. The man would now sit when he had a spare minute and look at the coins one by one and marvel at their value. A friendly co-worker asked what they were. They're mine, he said. Later, feeling ashamed, he approached her and said, I'm sorry about the coins. They were given to me. He paused. But here, since you're the reason I have this coin, I, I thought you might like it. She looked. It was a small gold and silver coin with an inscription that read, Kindness. Touched, she later had the coin mounted on a chain around her neck and would look at it on days when being kind was hard to do. So the weeks and months passed. John's magic coin purse became heavier and heavier. Each day he gave coins away and yet even more coins appeared. Each day, John found himself looking for new coins about new things he was thankful for. So many things, so many things to be thankful for. As winter came, John got even busier. He rang a bell for the Salvation Army. He made sandwiches for a soup kitchen. He offered to take an older neighbor Christmas shopping. But then it changed. It was the week before Christmas. He was wading across the street when he stepped into a snowbank, spilling slush into his shoes. He stopped and then burst out laughing as he realized he was standing outside the same coffee shop where a year ago the little girl gave him the purse. What a difference a year made. Instinctively, he felt for the coin purse and it was gone. He checked again. Oh. There it was. Relieved, he pulled it out of his pocket to find that it was empty. He looked in the snow and up and down the street. No coins. Sad and perplexed, he walked into the same coffee shop and tried to puzzle it out. It was as he was looking at the Christmas scene, once so bleak, now so full of life and energy, that he saw her. She was struggling to close the door of a taxi. Her shoulders were bent. A fashionably dressed woman that might have even been called pretty, yet her face was clouded with a frown. She looked angry and miserable and anxious and then John smiled. He dashed out into the snow, chasing after a person he never met, waving an empty purse. Well, that's our story for today. Thank you for listening. If you would care to comment, share, or pass this on in any way, I would appreciate it. If you're interested in buying some of the stories, I do have them available on CD or download through my website, which is ilikethatstory.net, or a subsite within that, aprairiechristmas.com. Books for sale, CDs, music, you name it, and of course, your comments and questions. Thanks for reaching out to me, and until next time, God bless.